Hey folks, welcome to Man Cave Makings with me, Gus. I am going to continue on with the theme of English U. I bought this stuff off of eBay, slabbed, and it has come, and I am delighted with it. Um, it is stunning, beautiful wood. I've used it before. I, uh, I made a side table for my, my sister. Uh, if you want to see that project, I'll stick a card somewhere up here um, and, and you can go and check that out. But the reason I've continued on is because it came out beautifully um, and it is all because of the wood itself. It's got open knots, closed knots, it's got grain in it, beautiful colours, ambers, reds, uh, that just sometimes just pop clean out of the wood. Uh, and this beautiful contrasting white um, sapling edge, yeah, just lovely bits of wood. And I was thinking to myself, that would look quite cool on a wall. Hmm, how about we do some clocks, some wall clocks, some river clocks. Let's put some resin in there, just use some base stock material to make some surrounds for it. Weld them up, fabricate them up, spray paint them, maybe some kind of different colours. So yeah, juices are going, stoked to get after it. So hope you can join me along the way. So let's get in it. So as you know, um, I'm all about learning, um, but I'm also about um, adding little bits of workshop tools where appropriate. Uh, appropriation is something that my wife might disagree with but uh, I added this ring roller to the, the stable and it is a beast of a machine and I couldn't do the surrounds without it. Um, I made this small jig um, to help with getting uniformity across all the pieces. When you're making more of one of anything, you need to make sure that you're getting consistency. Um, and this little jig helped me do that. Um, I, I made it so that you could get the cuts across. So when you overlap, you cut it down the middle, a bit like wallpapering, I guess. Um, and uh, then when you bring the two sides together, they're completely square and true to each other, which means that you can then just tack well down um, or weld the whole seam down and it's a, it's a perfect fit. So using the jig again to adjoin the flat bar with the square bar, relatively straightforward process, um, however did need uh, a little bit of help from uh, my smallest persuader in the tool chest, um, but uh, yeah, it, it, just squaring all that up and tack welding them in place um, was, uh, was an easy job. some 6mm round bar into the end of the battery gun, spinning that up against the bench grinder meant that I got a lovely little point onto the pointers. Um, and then just simply um, bending and cutting to the right lengths meant I got the uniformity across each of them and across all the clocks. So, living in Scotland, quite a high moisture content in the air, funny that. Um, so I decided to put in an anti-corrosion um, layer on the clock surrounds before adding in the base coats. So I just used the uh, epoxy kiln um, and it was really quite successful, so I was pretty chuffed with that. Um, these pieces of U that I got, um, just absolutely stunning. The sapling edge versus these beautiful colours that just pop through. Um, really, really, really nice. So it was just a simple case of measuring them off, marking them through and then cutting them with the ripsaw.
So I decided to make a large form for the epoxy uh, pour um, using the hot gun just to uh, stick everything down, get everything uh, kind of boxed in um, and uh, yeah it, it was going really well so uh, I thought I'd just crack on and do the whole lot in one pour um, which we shall discuss in a bit. So the next job on the list obviously is the resin alchemy where you get to go and play with colors and pigments and yeah you just make this stuff up and sometimes you get it right sometimes you get it wrong but essentially it's up to you how much pigment you put in versus how much color you put in um, and yeah I don't think I've got consistency here at all but um, it came out brilliantly well um, and it is entirely up to you it's your it's I guess this is where your um, artistic flair comes to the fore and you just um, play around with the resins as it goes off and makes the swirling patterns and uh, yeah it's it's a relatively straightforward thing to go and play with So remember, we were going to discuss something? Yeah, well, doing a big form means that you do get leakage. Um, and that leakage can be small um, or it can be wholesale and you lose everything out of the, uh, the form. Um, I, I probably would do this a slightly different way next time. Um, as you can see here, um, there was quite a lot of uh, leakage, but uh, essentially it did work in, in the round, um, but um, I think I lost a little bit of resin uh, and certainly the uh, makeup when we get to the next piece, which is the routing, meant that there was quite a lot of material that I had to uh, bear back um, because um, of the, the, the leakage out of the pore. sped this up obviously um, but essentially all I'm trying to say here is take your time over each one of these phases of the grits that you go through to get your boards nice and square and flat. Um, I work all the way from 80 grit all the way through to about 400 and then onto a polishing um, grit sand um, uh, from, from there. Um, yeah take your time over this bit um, because the, the results are oof, stunning. So I could have employed a bit of editorial license here and stuck this sequence in along with the fabrication section, but um, no, this was an afterthought. Um, uh, when I was when I'd done the, the, the sort of base coat uh, painting, I was thinking to myself, how am I going to stick these on the wall? Um, oh dear, yeah, I forgot about that. Oops, never mind. Um, so I designed these little tabards to go on with a slot section um, so that you can uh, hang the um, clocks on the wall um, and also fix the wood to the surrounds at the same time so uh, yeah it worked out in the end but uh, yeah came a little bit late in the sequence which meant that I had to go and do the base coat again ah well so having the contrasting color on the surround does mean that there is a heck of a lot of masking and rework and repainting to do on it but you know what else are you going to do on a lovely summer's weekend stroke a few more days well the results show for themselves Oof, crispy <laughs> You 
using the pointers and a straight edge as reference, I was able to find the center of the clock faces and then just putting a center punch mark on there, transferring that across to the drill press. And I got the hole nice and square, which is important when you get the shaft through that it all sits square and the hands don't sit all wonky all over the face. So uh, yeah, I made up a little uh, router jig um, to allow me to get the mechanism um, in the right spot um, and then uh, sink those into the back of the U um, to the right level um, uh, and it worked really well. Navigating the finishes debate. Well, I chose wipe on poly and it came out absolutely cracking for, for, for this application. Maybe you've used something different. Um, please do drop me a line. Um, I'm really interested to find out what works well for you guys. Uh, but we're on to the last leg. So uh, yeah, Humpty Dumpty getting put back together. Uh, faces to surrounds, surrounds to mechanisms, mechanisms to hands. So here we are, they're all done. And I am mega chuffed with how these have come out. They've just, ah, they're just really, really nice things to look at. Um, uh, one of the sort of things that I changed or didn't really think about at the start of this process was these colored surrounds. Um, and, I, and I thought about that halfway through the build and um, I'm so glad I incorporated it in this because that, it's stellar now. It is just popped off to the next level. Um, it completes the, the, the surrounding clock and um, ties it in with the resin. The resin against the sapling edge of you. Wow, it is just so crispy. It is beautiful stuff to look at. Um, and, and I'm just super chuffed with how these have come out. Um, relatively straightforward thing to do. Um, I mean, I've made seven of these things um, and making more of one of anything is a, a bit of a task, but. These are gonna all go to family members, um, but I'll probably make some more because um, I'll maybe sell them at local fairs. Um, really nice things to look at as well. Um, if that's something that you maybe get after as well, you know, drop me a comment, let me know how you get on with the process. I try and give you as much information as possible within these videos that I make, um, and I always like to hear from you. So, you know, maybe hit a like button if that's something you'd like doing, um, and if this is the kind of content that you like watching, maybe consider subscribing to my channel also. Thanks very much for watching, and as always, well, I hope to catch you again.